Oh, what's in these cases so heavy? I better get a tip, I tell you. They're only staying for a night. This week, our designers are checking into a quintessential country manor. It's hotels week. <laughs> Ten aspiring designers competing for one life-changing contract to transform a luxury hotel apartment in Cornwall. Last time... Oh, my God, I love it! ..the contest kicked off with high-end apartments. If you think Ibiza meets Bahamas, it's really accomplished. It was a close call for Amy and Paul. I'm frustrated. This is not two people coming together. Molly got in a muddle. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. But it was curtains for Richard. Curtain is supposed to block light out. I'm sorry, Richard. Oh. It's week two. The nine remaining designers arrive at Michelle's studio to hear their next brief. Hi. Oh, hi, hi, guys. Hi. I'm back. I'm so determined to not be in that coach again. You nervous? Yeah, I'm packing her. Doesn't matter how good I did last week, I've got to bring it all over again. Challenge one's gone so swimmingly. Challenge two, I intend to just go for it. Full steam ahead. Hello, guys. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> you survived week one. How are you feeling? I feel like Dorothy. Dorothy, yeah, I'm not in <laughs> Kansas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, look at you. Flamingo feathers and leopard skin. You're like yep. a walking, talking safari. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. Guess it all feels a bit more real now the first person's gone home. <laughs> Well, happy days, because I'm taking you all off to the heart of the British countryside for our next challenge. Ooh. Yes, we're going to Wooten House in the Surrey Hills. Now a luxury hotel boasting over a hundred bedrooms, Wooten House was once home to diarist and botanist John Evelyn, famed for creating the first Italian garden in England. And this is a country house hotel that's got a few bedrooms that really do need a bit of an update. And you all get one each on which to work oh, your magic. Wow. Oh. It is the sweet liberation of working solo. And I do really want you to run with that. This challenge is about putting your signature stamp on those rooms. But, you know, there's always a but. <laughs> I really want you to be mindful of the incredible location and the classic eccentric Britishness of the venue. It's a historic hotel with Grade 2 listed gardens. It deserves a bit more than just paint and paper. I want to see your design skills as well as your decorative flair. And at the end of the challenge, the three weakest designers will be in front of the judges on the sofa. And sadly, one of you will be going home. So good luck, OK? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Oh, wow. mm. It sounds exciting, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm nervous about this challenge. It's definitely a tricky subject. You just whack a Union Jack flag in it and go, there you go. Lots to think about. There's lots to think about. I have a lot to prove in this one. I really want to show how good I am. I am so buzzing for this brief. Michelle wants design flair, and I'm going to bring it. Hotels. Exciting. It is exciting. There's so much room to play with a hotel, and we've asked them to do signature style, but there are a few caveats. That's going to be tricky, applying your own signature style to a classy hotel. You've got to sort of restrain yourself, but still show a bit of your character. Completely. The brief specifically asks for a kind of eccentric Britishness, which is pretty hard to define, really. In my eyes, Britishness in design is about this kind of irreverence. It's about that kind of island mentality of pushing against the norm. I mean, we're the home of punk, and yet we also do classic and traditional really well so it's all about that contrast how british do you want it though because britain means a lot of things to a lot of different people it does but what i don't want to see is cliches i don't want bulldogs and union jacks i don't want people in string vests and fish and chips so basically my family you don't want them at the hotel wow sorry <laughs> <laughs> nestled in 13 acres of immaculate grounds oh my god 
This country house hotel with nine bedrooms in need of transformation. It's way smaller than I thought, which scares the bejesus out of me. The designers have a budget of £1,500. Oh, it's quite exciting, isn't it? And just two days to complete their challenge. Just keep moving, keep moving, don't stop. We need you there, guys. On hand to help turn their concepts into reality. They've each been assigned a talented team of tradespeople. My room today, I want it to look like an uh, English country garden, but I'm adding a little twist because I'm going to have it like Romanesque. In the gardens, there's quite a few columns and there's, there's lots of sort of nods on the Italian, so that's the whole basis of the room. Peter's bringing the Italian garden into his room with two Roman pillars framing the bed. He's gone for a pink colour scheme, a triangular paint pattern on the ceiling, and as a nod to the British countryside, panels of hollyhock patterned wallpaper. In the wasted area above the bathroom, he's creating a library to make the space functional. Yeah, dead easy, dead easy. Rome wasn't built in a day, so <laughs> better hurry up. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is much bigger than what I thought it was. Rooms have been randomly allocated and Abby's got the largest. It is a really big room and especially with an added hallway. I've got to think about two spaces, not just one, but I'm ready to rise to the challenge. Abby's based a design around British wisteria, which will hang from trellis in the hallway and feature in patterned wallpaper in a central panel behind the bed. She sourced vintage furniture, including a dressing table, wardrobe and headboard with attached side tables. The room will be painted green and blue with luxe cycled pieces completing the look. Oh, my God. But it's not just the room that's big. I'm really concerned about the bed. I measured my bed wrong. I only bought a double headboard with me. This is clearly a king size. The headboards and the side tables aren't actually going to fit in the frame. So, yes, I'm feeling very, very worried now about this. I'm going to have to have a very long conversation with my carpenter, as I can't be having a double headboard on a king-size bed. After being on the sofa last week, Molly's out to prove her place in the competition with an ambitious scheme. I think I'll start with carpentry, because there's so much to do. So I'm having, like, panelling go the whole way around the room. And then we're going to paint that olive green. Last week, Michelle said that she couldn't see where my design started and how it evolved. So I feel like I've really got something to prove this week. And then I want to build two side tables, okay. but with the panelling squares on them, so they kind of blend into the panelling. There's a lot of stuff that I've really pushed myself with in the fact that I'm sort of having this built-in panelling. I've got lots of bold colours, but also made them quite heritage. From here over, it's going to be like a peachy, pinky. So I really have given everything a lot of thought, and I just yeah, really hope it comes across. Brute force. Take out all your anger that you've got in the world. This is destruction! So, yeah, it's all this entrance here, which nobody else has. So that's why I need two of you guys. Coming out. Thank God. Rochelle wants to bring the outside in with her big design feature. I'm going to have a mural on the wall. The mural is two metres by two and a half metres. It is going to have a fake window that sits in front of it. It's almost like you're looking at into an Italian garden. This brief, I have approached it as John Evelyn, the botanist, as being my client. And there's a quote from his diary, it's a place in paradise, and that's what I am trying to create. But there's already trouble in paradise. Rochelle, there's quite a bit of a mould problem. That is pretty awful. Rochelle's mural will sit on a lime wash feature wall to create the feeling of a rustic chateau to match her Italian garden. But mould isn't part of the plan. 
do you think that that is going to be a big issue with time? My main concern is dry in time. Hopefully, with a good clean, the paint should still adhere. Oh my gosh, what is it stuck on with? Mold. <laughs> so, I want to do a window seat right here and either side, bookshelf and desk, and a bar here. Banjo's got a small room, but big plans. When I create a room, I always love to create a character. So this time I've thought of a drunk botanist. He's just come home from an expedition in Polynesia and he's brought some artefacts with him and he's sitting up on his window seat having a dram and life's good. Banjo's hoping to transform his room by building shelves either side of his window to create a desk, bench seat and bar, which will be divided from the sleeping area with a wooden pub screen. The whole room will be painted British racing green, with big botanical murals adorning the walls. And how deep are these bookcases? Well, I wanted it 70, the bookcase, and then maybe 60 for the chair. OK. But is that too deep? That's quite a lot, isn't it? <laughs> That's, <really deep. laughs> That's like a whole house. <laughs> um, so... so we should rip that up and start again. <laughs> no, there's, there's measurements on that. Oh, no. <laughs> It's done. It's done. <laughs> We've had to cut the whole thing down, make the window seat wider, and hopefully that will let more light in and we'll make every little individual bit sing. Down the corridor... How's the paint going on? Yeah, it's done. Yeah. not too bad. Dean's going to town with his signature style. This is going to be all black. Black and gold with green furniture, lots of plants. There'll be no fake plants at all, only real plants allowed in this room. Right now, it's quite a flat black box. My lovely carpenter is going to put the dado rails up on the wall, so once that goes up, it'll give you some shape and some character. So I'm looking forward to that bit. See, I like it to be bold, sexy, but sophisticated, but you're still trying to hit the brief. So I think there's a lot of pressure. You might as well call this a roulette table, and I'm betting on black. It's as fragile, it's not, I promise. Molly's making an oversized headboard and covering it in fabric she's designed herself. Okay. I think it's really important to do building this time round. Michelle always says how it's meant to be, you know, really design led. It's not good, good enough to just decorate. Design is pretty much embedded in me. Wherever I go, whatever I do, all I'm thinking is design, design, design. That's why I just want an opportunity to prove myself. Being a part of the competition, there's a huge amount on the line. I feel like it's my big break, so let's hope. Let's hope. <laughs> no turning back. With Challenge 2 well underway. Oh, wow, well, look how grand this is. Wish I'd brushed my teeth now. It's time for me to check in with the designers. Oh, this is the life. In the country. In the country. In the country. Peter. Hey, hello, are you all right? <laughs> oh, look at this. <laughs> I feel like Russell Crowe in Gladiator. <laughs> Alan Maximus. <laughs> Where the hell did you get these? I've got like them... a car boot sale in Pompeii. Uh, <laughs> no, from a salvage yard in Whitney Bay. Really? And they are perfect for this hotel, aren't they? Yeah, because there's pillars everywhere. So, listen, you must be a right smug, Sally, because Michelle loved your design last week. You can't get too smug, though. You can't. You've got to sort of keep a level and keep working. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I'll come and see it a bit later. Thanks very much. I wear pets. <laughs> Ta-ra. Ta-ra, love. <laughs> you see all those screws there? Having been part of the winning team with Peter last week, Fran's feeling confident. I just want to paint the wood that's underneath. I don't think it'll take long to get this out. OK. I feel like I've hit the brief. And in terms of, like, the Britishness, I kind of channeled a bit of kind of Kate Middleton cool. But I also took a lot of inspiration from the arts and crafts movement, William Morris. I've got beautiful wallpaper with kind of florals, which is a third of my budget. That was my starting point. 
Oh, it looks really great, Karen. Because of her expensive wallpaper, she's being resourceful. She is upcycling the existing furniture and making some bespoke accessories. This is my light fitting, or at the moment, a balloon. The idea is that I pop it and then you're left with this kind of shell. Oh! <laughs> it's halfway through day one. Ah. Oh, strong Scottish last. It's all the Embry and Vimp tool. <laughs> this is just the headboard base. It'll look rather lush. This colour is perfect. It's hard, right, this? Oh, we have paint on the walls. I like it. I love it. A bright ceiling makes a bright room. Oh, my God. That is so dark. My God. Got no lights on. But this is, like, daylight. Is this what daylight looks like in here? I was audibly shocked. But, honestly, too late to change the colour. Just dark, isn't it? At least it's not black. Maybe six of us. OK, well, I'll work it out. Yeah. I'll space it out evenly. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Dean? I can't believe you painted it black. Can't you believe it? Believe it! <laughs> No, there's no turning back now. How are you feeling about it? You like it? You've painted it black. I know. I but know. This is my signature colour. I know it is. I know it is. OK, wow. I, I can't believe I just I saw know. that as a walk past. <laughs> it's quick. But I'm actually shocked that this is the challenge that he's picked to do black. I mean, actually, no, it's signature style, and Dean is the king of darkness, self-proclaimed. But, um, yeah, I just didn't think he'd do it in a four-star manor house in the countryside. She did look a little bit like, oh, my God, what have you done? It's dark, really dark. But it starts off like a butterfly in its true form. Not very pretty, but at the end, it blossoms. There you are, Fran. Hey! Trust you to be hiding in the secret garden. What's this? It's my egg. It looks like something else on Jurassic Park. I know, I know. You know when the, those people <laughs> came out? <laughs> oh. It is a paper mache light fitting. Why paper mache? Do you want me to lend you some money? Well, yeah. Like, basically, <laughs> yeah, I want it like a wow light fitting, but anything wow is like wow expensive. Yeah, wow. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the result. I'm trying to keep it modern and fresh, not so kind of Downton Abbey. Downton Shabby, by the looks of it. <laughs> I'm joking. I love paper mache. A lot of my clothes are made of that. Are they? Yes. <laughs> In Rochelle's room, it's slow progress with her feature wall. The decorators are trying to get the mould off of the walls. There's still quite a lot to do. Luckily, the ceiling is straightforward. I really like the deep raspberry. This is the nod to the eccentric and British. Something a little bit unexpected, but it also will give a bit of warmth. I studied interior design as a degree, but my career didn't really kick off because of a lack of confidence. I never thought I was good enough, and it was an industry that intimidated me. I see this as being an experience where I get to learn and grow. Maybe I'm not as terrible as, <laughs> as I thought. <laughs> I think that's going to look really nice. Yeah. Down the hall, Abby's trying to sort her bed dramas. We've had to rip my bed apart and drill it and attach it to a wall. We're going to put blocks behind this headboard and where the gap is, I am going to make a nice little head headboard cushion. But her measuring mishap has further design implications. I had the bed in the middle of the room and then I had the wallpaper going up in the middle in a rectangle, but it would be a very tight squeeze to get through the door. Um, so I've moved it more over to the one side. I didn't want people to come through my amazing hallway and then just be hit with a bed, but moving the bed had such a domino effect on every single other aesthetic that was going to go on that back wall. So we're going to put the panel on the wall here above there. You know what? We're just doing it. In Peter's room... 
he's getting a glimpse of his clever design feature. The carpenter made the first part in the bookcase. It's exactly how I want it. It's disguising a poor bit of architecture, and libraries are very British. I feel like a proper designer now, you know? <laughs> it's brilliant, the feeling. I, I could take this further, and I can do this for a living. I'm a hairdresser, but I've always wanted to be an interior designer since high school. My style is chameleon. One minute I've got a very busy room, and the next I've got a very plain room. I'm definitely going to bring something to this competition. Expect the unexpected. Yeah. It looks stunning. Once that's filled with books and painted deep purple. Great. <gasps> oh, look at that. After struggling to make her mark in the first challenge... It looks so good. Print designer Amy is keen to showcase her talents. It's going to feel quite impactful. I mean, fingers crossed. Her hero piece is a panelled headboard which will feature inset antiqued mirrors. And her colour scheme will complement her bespoke wallpaper. My signature style is all about print and pattern. This is my print that I've designed for Wooten. So I basically hand draw everything, scan it in, and then just arrange it in a repeat pattern. This is one of the arches downstairs, and then that's the Evelyn family, who the house belonged to originally. I feel like this is screaming me because it's so detailed. That's what makes me different from anyone else. Down the hall... My signature style is all about the relationship between pattern, texture and colour. Former teammate Paul will bring his Italian Renaissance scheme to life with an eclectic mix of vintage and modern fabrics and furnishings. These are Renaissance tiebacks, so there's lots of Renaissance references in the room. Working on my own, I suppose I'm used to it because I manage large teams. This is my braid for the curtains. This week, I'm probably more in my comfort zone because I can just crack on and deliver. That will run down the edge of each curtain. Mix vintage with contemporary stripes. It's British, it's eclectic, it's eccentric. If you're looking for wow factor, I've just given it you, baby. It's going to be amazing. Rochelle? Oh, hello! Ah, where have you come from, <laughs> Narnia? Stepping out of my wardrobe. <laughs> Seen Aslan, now you've got Alan. <laughs> Worked in my head, let's move on. Um, <laughs> how's it all going? OK, I've had a lot of mould on my wall. You haven't? Yeah. This is old hotel in the middle of the Surrey countryside. It's going to have mould, so what are you going to do about it? We're going to just cover it with a little bit of gold. We're turning mould to gold. I love it. I'm going to get that as a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> right, lads. Whose drill is this? Abby's putting the stress of mismeasuring to one side and going to her happy place, Lux Cycling. These are upcycled Staffordshire dog statues. So I'm going to make these into bedside lamps to go on my lovely new floating bedside tables. I'm just going to drill him up, put a hole in his head. I describe myself as a Lux Cycler because I'm an upcycler with a luxury edge. I take the things that were on your grandma's fireplace, give them a bit of love, add a bit of gold leaf, and make people want them again. Ah! It's the anticipation, man. It gets me every time. <laughs> I mean, I wish they were real. I could really do with a cuddle from a dog now. Day one draws to a close. That is the best ceiling that I've done. Everything's gone absolutely amazing today. Day one was a nightmare, but I'm really proud of how the room's looking. Oh, oh yeah? my goodness. I'm, I'm buzzing. But while some designers have made good progress... Oh, yeah, sexy. ...others are playing catch-up. Oh. oh, my God. End of day one, and I've basically put some foam on some wood. So I'm just praying I can make up the time. I am worried about that feature wall that the mural's going on. We've had so many issues, I don't even know if it's going to come off the way I want it to. The pressure will be on tomorrow. It's 
It's the final day of the challenge. I'm very stressed today. I was laying in bed thinking about all the stuff that you've got to do, which is fun. In just 12 hours, the designers will face the judges. Today is all about ignoring what happened yesterday and just getting it all done. Peter's proved Rome can't be built in a day. Yeah. Oh, hold well on. But he's hoping it'll be built in two. They're in. Now they're in. I just feel the room. The Roman pillars are a big statement, but all of my designs do have a big statement in them. I think bold statements, if they're subtly executed, they work very well. We're going to have some lighting in there. I'm going to put the bedside tables onto the pillars. They're going to be retracting bedside tables that move. I was going to do one big headboard that um, had some material on. I've changed my mind. Cause if there was fabric there and wallpaper, it just it would be too much. So I've upholstered these, and they're going to go as the um, headboard. Hiya, Amy. Hi, Alan. How are you? This is romantic, isn't, <laughs> isn't it? it? <laughs> Come into my private garden. <laughs> now, listen, can I be honest? Please. Last week on that settee, you had a face like thunder. I understood why I was there, and I was disappointed in myself. <laughs> so what, what have you done this week to make sure you are not on that sofa? This week, I'm going big on the build. So I've gone for a bit of a showpiece. Yeah. So it's a big panelled headboard, and then I've got mirrors that I bought, and I've antiqued to go into it. Well, how'd you antique them? So I just got a pack of IKEA mirrors, strip them with paint stripper, bleach them, and then you get your nice mottled effect to make it look a bit more antique -y. That's really clever. Every time I go to Ikea, I just buy a photon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Well, listen, I can't wait to see it. I'm actually going to go because you... I've got a really <laughs> numb <square>. bum. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> Bye, Alan. Yeah. Thanks for coming. It's mid-morning and Wooden House is a hive of activity. <gasps> oh, wow. I love it. This is my headboard. We're just going to use the same fabric that I'm using in the curtains. This is the drunk botanist's desk chair. He fancies himself a novelist, but he really can't string a sentence together. It's time to start hanging wet. I just hit myself in the face. I'm losing the will to live today. The reason why I've gone for fake wisteria flowers is because I think Wisteria is just so iconically British, and I wanted that wow moment from people when they walked through the door. I'm really proud of this idea, and this idea has sparked my whole room. I think that this could be my Abby, you're a genius moment. Abby's room is in bloom, but Rochelle is still waiting on her lime wash wall. I was going to use the darker colour over the wall and then brush a lighter tone on top. It's almost like a rough, plastered effect. There's still a lot to do. We still need the feature wall to be done, the mural to go up, the window to go up. And that's not even considering that the rest of the room needs dressing. So now the carpenter's going to have to down tools, stop doing the window and help get the wall going and prepared so that the mural can go up and the window can go up. Right now, I'm just doing a touch-up on certain areas. When you see this natural daylight, it's unforgiving. Dean! Alan! <laughs> yeah. Look! I know, huh? Yeah. Your shirt bounces right off the room. I know, <laughs> good, that's why I wore it. <laughs> but listen, it's very dark in here. I'm having a flashback to being back in the womb. You couldn't do it in a small room with a small window, so cos I've got all this open space, I've got to do it, Alan. Michelle said classic English. Yeah. Is this English? The features are English, but with my twist. I'm Caribbean, so I've got to put a little bit of colour into this room. Got some green plants, some mustard bed covers, green covers, so the greenery will come in. I see. So there's method in your madness. Uh, you're thinking downstairs for Oh, dancing. well, basically, do you know what? It's a womb with yeah. a view. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> I'm taking that one. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it. Michelle this week asked for signature stars, and boy has Dean delivered. But is it too bold? Where's the Britishness? He's got to remember this is a hotel. Has he thought of the client enough? Oh, that's perfect. It's halfway through day two. Got you, got you, got you, got you. And it's all systems go. The roof's on. I love it. There's just so much to do. So little time. <gasps> oh! That looks amazing. We will finish on time. K 
Kate Middleton will be so happy to stay here. Oh my goodness, guys. It fits. I love it. I mean, of course my room was dark without light. I'm so irrational. <laughs> what have we got? It's different. In Peter's room. Um, 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 no idea. His newly adapted headboard panels are proving tricky to attach to the wall. Tell you what. You can just screw that in. I shall find something to put on that. Just go ahead and screw them. Just screw them in. Just screw them in. It's getting a bit stressful. In Rochelle's room... I want little speckles of gold in it, but I don't want it to be tacky. With her wall finally finished, she's turning mould into gold. I just think don't do it too concentrated. Just random. And at long last, her Italian garden mural is going up. The window is always going to be the main feature. It is almost exactly how I had it in my visual, but it feels a bit basic. I felt really excited about my window, and now I'm like, it's... Actually, not that great. Let's have a look, see what it looks like there, sorry. I don't know, I just think I'm feeling it today. I just don't feel like I'm good enough. My room's just a massive window. I'm fine. I just need to pull myself together and just get on with it now. Russell. Okay, perfect. I'll just pick right up against the wall. Paul! Oh! Put that down Mr. there. Paul. I am pooped. You take a pew in the New oh. Conservatory chair. It's gorgeous. It's nice. Yeah. I'm loving this. Van Gogh. This is my Van Gogh almond blossom mural. Gorgeous. I know he's dead, but I spoke to him. What? He's said... dead? He is, yeah. When did he die? Years ago. No wonder he didn't ring me back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I spoke to him in a dream and I said. Yes. Do you think you can do it for me? Yeah. And look, it's here. Oh, he is good, thank God, isn't he? Do you want to see my curtain? Yes, so yes, yes. So, basically, these are the drapes that are going to go up there. Yeah. All I need is a curtain pole, Alan. Because, you know, we've only got a few hours left. Have you got one coming? I think we've actually got an hour and a half. Oh, God. <laughs> I think you're chatting to me. It's the final countdown. Oh, that is stunning. And it's all about the finishing touches. That's eccentric. The eccentricity is coming in all the little details. My taxidermy pheasant, my glass specimens, all my little bits and bobs. A dark black room with high walls. If this is not eccentric, I don't know what is. I'm just layering layer after layer of eccentricity into this room. And you know, this has just evolved, and I really like it. I've just added more and more as it's gone on. I don't know how it's happened. It's just, it's happened. You'll see a Jack Russell in my room. You'll see a Mad March hair. You'll see a cat with some crown jewels. Um, you'll see some very English-looking objects. I like the eccentricity. Come on, Peter. All sense goes out the window sometimes when you're rushing to get on. With the clock ticking, at least he's found a solution for his headboard. We had to screw them in. and Obviously, these screws were exposed. And I had loads of these knobs, these doorknobs. So I had to go for it. I had to just stick the doorknobs on. It was either screws or knobs, and knobs won. This is the last guy to go in, my pub screen. When the bar goes in, the drinks come out, the shirts come off, <laughs> just because I'm sweaty. The designers race to the finish line. This is the bit where you can win gold or you get silver. I nearly dropped that. I need to calm down. But while some are on the home straight... It's coming together! ..others are lagging behind. I think I'm just going to have to give up. There's a bit of dodgy sewing on the top, which I'm trying to tuck in. I've got 20 minutes left, and my picture hasn't been hung, curtains haven't been hung. Don't drip, don't drip, don't drip. Everything's unfinished. Cheers. Man, we did it. Mmm. The botanist. The drunk botanist. He would be proud. Yes. Oh, 
Mate! I'm so sorry. It sounds apocalyptic out there, doesn't it? Let's hope they don't all peel off the wall. As the serenity, you can actually hear the birds singing. It's starting to feel a bit more luxurious. They look amazing. Oh. <laughs> Cheers. We can work together again. Cheers. <laughs> Joining Michelle to judge this week... Such a beautiful place here. Yeah. Isn't it? The designer behind Claridge's, the Connaught and some of London's most iconic hospitality venues, Guy Oliver. Here we are, Guy, in the gorgeous Grade 2 listed grounds of Wooten House. And we've asked our designers to show us some of their signature style, but I do want them to kind of reflect and represent this incredible historical location. Part of the brief was being British, and this is a very British establishment. We've also got to show a bit of eccentricity, and that's about showing something unique. My biggest issue is I don't want pastiche or cliché. I don't want to walk in and see as Union Jacks and antler heads or something <laughs> too obvious. It's such a fantastic place. I mean, they must be inspired. If they've got creativity, they'll be able to make something pretty impressive. Brilliant. Okay. Come on, let's, let's go, go. see. <laughs> I did everything I possibly could, although it might have been over-ambitious, and maybe that's worked to my detriment. I'd rather have pushed myself and it not came off than just stuck really safe when it not happened. Ah. Oh. Now, Guy, this is Molly's room. Molly was on the sofa last week, and she got quite a big talking to from oh. me to really understand that idea of having one strong design concept and then rolling the rest of the room around it. And I have to say, I think she's really understood what I was trying to say. I love the fact that she's just taken that one lovely, rich olive colour and she's painted yeah. the table in it. And it's, it's one big idea. When you walk in and you see that beautifully framed view of the garden, she's actually referenced the window. That vignette in the room is actually rather charming. The shape of the window and the Gothic fabric, it sets it really beautifully. I get the feeling there may have been some rushing going on here. Some of the finishing details on some of these is pretty rough. Some of it feels a bit homespun. I mean, that little shape on the headboard isn't well upholstered. Also, this weird mouse hole in the cupboard door wouldn't have been amiss to put a discreet knob on it. I can still feel that Molly has a way to go, but if she keeps this pace up, who knows how far she could go. If I'm on the sofa this week, I feel like I can defend my design choices. Some of the decisions that I made were because of time or budget. But if I go out, I made a wicked lampshade. I love that paper. It's a really sophisticated paper. I love, love, love the colour palette. But when I walked in, you walk in on this block of green and I immediately thought it should have been the other way around. Just because that would soften when you this whole bedhead look. Yeah. I mean, this is a great statement, is it? I love <laughs> yeah. the effect of the light inside there. It's actually very nice. I think it's chic and modern, and I like that she's coloured the inside a bit silver. She's made the lampshades, and I do like the paint finish on that chest of drawers. Not sure about the seaside sort of blue. I get that she's referring to the wallpaper, but maybe if that had gone into the greens or something, it might have been more relevant. No, I agree. I'm really proud of myself and I'm really chuffed with how my room looks. The one thing I'm most happy about is the hallway. I love it. I just think it sets the tone for the whole room. I'm thinking you might have opinions <laughs> about this guy. <laughs> They've certainly been channeling the botanical part of the brief. There's rather a lot of plastic vegetation. Um, Which seems kind of contrary when we've yeah. gone, I've got this incredible the real thing landscape, yeah. I can see she's tried to be brushed with the colours. I like the pink, it's very feminine. Mildly distracted by what on earth is going on here with the bedhead. I mean, it looks like she's just chopped off the tables and widened the whole thing. It doesn't work. It's asymmetrical. There's too much going on there. It's confusing visually. I kind of feel like there's so many little bits of stuff going on. They're all eclectic and eccentric, but it's not disciplined. None of it's sort of relating. They're all near misses. You can see what she's trying to do, mm -hmm. but she's not quite done it. Right. Agreed. I think the black has paid off. It's very eccentric and very different and bold, so I think I have hit the nail on the head because it's truly British to be different. So I hopefully they'll love it as much as I do. 
Now, Dean does love a dark colour. His own home is very much this kind of vibe, so we did ask for signature style, and that's what we've got, but, my goodness, doesn't this feel opulent? It does. The black room, black carpet, it's a very simple scheme. And then the mustard's a great accent colour. And the real greenery is a relief. It's so much more disciplined than the last room we were in. And some nice little modern additions. Have you spotted this sort of extra portion to the wardrobe? which feels really seamless. It's clever, it feels very boutique and contemporary of the moment. I guess, though, if we're going to be sticklers for our brief, do we get that sense of Britishness? Is there an eccentricity to it? The greenery and the leaves and things are defaulting back to the evening theme. That's a nod to British eccentricity. And this room has got a definite character that shows his personality. I feel he's very much met the brief and exceeded it, quite frankly. There's loads of print and pattern in there, clashing colours. Very bespoke to the hotel. I'm proud of what I've done. And it feels like me. Amy <laughs> is a textile designer. Can okay. you tell? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's clever. I love the idea that this wallpaper is reflecting John Evelyn. It's an amazing detail. But I got a bit of a shock when I turned left because the colours were so conflicting. That's going down the pattern mismatch and clash thing for eccentricity, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of rather love how it sort of fades out here. I really get Amy's exquisite eye for detail. But my worry with Amy is if you took away the prints, mm -hmm. all we have is the bedhead. I mean, yeah. thank goodness for the bedhead because she's showing me here that she's done some design. And I like that. But is it hanging together enough? It's not a coherent story. There's lots of wonderful details, but no coherent whole. It's actually gone more eccentric than I thought it was going to do. But I've stepped back, looked at the room, and I've given myself a one of them, you know, like, you've done well. You've done well, lad. Oh, my goodness, this is an assault <laughs> on the senses. It's quite difficult to take it all in, isn't it? I mean, this is the brilliance of a brief that includes words like Britishness, eccentricity, because you literally see so many interpretations of it. But this, to me, really is what it's not about. Right. It's just the clichés, it's the clashing, it's the eccentricity, because I've just put all these mad, crazy things together, but that isn't it. Yeah. What you've got is mad, crazy things put together. It's like he's kept layering in more ideas and doesn't know where to stop. You've got the temple, you've got the kind of... <laughs> health and oh my god, health and safety nightmare on the bed here. Then we've got panels, mm -hmm. and then I've got this practically fluorescent bed cover. I'm just <laughs> struggling to get a sense of what was he thinking. There are elements which are interesting. The bookcase disguising the pod bathroom. Now I agree. That's a design feature. That's yeah. clever. It makes use of the space. I just slightly lose it with all of this stuff. It's just they're two completely different languages. I've gone for British eccentric eclecticism. I've done that through my fabrics, mixing vintage with contemporary. The room has just come together. It's, it's stunning. Well, this is a nice fresh room. It is, isn't yeah. it? Fresh and bright. Love the stripes on the ceiling. That's Looks a really well-observed detail. Yeah, it's clean and calming. And he's layered all those colours. They're at least working in a good palette together. And I love the fact that we see the curtain fabric repeated in the valance on the bed, mm -hmm. which is just a sweet little detail yep. which shows that someone has really considered mm -hmm. those finer points of what pulls a room together. And I'm still not quite sure what his signature style is. I mean, it's, it's a display in good taste. I mean, he knows how to layer colours and to bring tones and palettes together, but it, it's not necessarily showing his personality. I think I have created the feeling in my room that I had set out to create, but the finessing just isn't there for me, and I just feel like that's where I'm going to fall down. Oh, gosh. It's not great when you walk in and feel slightly underwhelmed, is it? The idea of the view is a nice idea, but how it's been implemented doesn't feel right. It is quite a splendid idea to think, oh, I'm in the midst of all this Italianate yep. gardens, I'm going to replicate it here, but... The optimism of the idea uh -huh. has just been really let down by how it's actually been done. But perhaps if she'd been a bit more theatrical about it yeah. um, and used maybe a drawing of a garden, because nobody would ever believe that that was a real view. 
You know what this room is making me feel like? Everything could just be kind of tweaked and pulled and pushed slightly. Right. It would be so much better. Maybe if the ceiling, Carla, came right down yes. over and around the window, it would just have more punch. This is a room that, it actually lacks confidence. Yeah. I'm ecstatic, like a little bit tipsy. Um, if Michelle doesn't like it, I'll be gutted because I love it and it's absolutely me. Oh, guy, I know you're going to love this one. It's a small room with a small window, but what a big impact. It's joyful. This is really, really smart. He has a small window, but framing the window with the dark green and that joinery makes that window look bigger. It's that bravery of approach, isn't it? Because some people would be scared of using a colour so dark, but it really works here. It feels cosy and inviting. Yeah. Uh, he's created that wonderful bay window. It's beautifully conceived. You've got the bar area on one side, desk on the other. Feels like a wonderful boutique hotel room, and it's got character. But it ticks the botanical references, doesn't it? It ticks the kind of little nods to Britishness, and the eccentricity have <laughs> got a little bit of the old kind of, you know, English pub. Yeah. Love it. It's charming. I really love this room. Oh, oh my, my goodness me. Before the designers return to Michelle's studio... Wow! Colour scheme! ..a moment to eye up their competition. Her wallpaper, she must have made it herself. Yeah, she did. That's very clever. It's almost as good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of boudoir-y. I don't know what Peter gets up to at home, but there's some kinky stuff going on in here. I mean, look at that. <laughs> I don't feel massively overwhelmed. I don't really know why. I just don't have that... Wow! I definitely think this is stiff competition. Even though mine's gone fully black, I left the ceiling light up. The light could bounce off. That's my only thing with this room. It's results day. With a dream job contract at stake, the designers are about to find out who's one step closer and who's going home. I honestly believe that I hit the brief this week. My design was spot on. I would feel very confident if I was on the sofa because I had some strong, unique designs. I think I've got more to give. Let's just hope I'm hanging around for the next challenge. Hello. Hello, everyone. So... Did you enjoy being in the countryside? It was so stressful. It was meant to be this lovely time in the Surrey countryside. It was like a coiled spring. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I just say it was an amazing effort from all of you, so well done, you. Thank you. Now, before we find out who's going to be on the sofa this week, Michelle asked me to give a special shout-out because there was two standout rooms that the judges wanted to check in immediately. <laughs> Well done, Dean. Thank you. And Banjo. <laughs> Unfortunately, there were three bedrooms they didn't think were so successful. The designers who will be going in front of the judges this week, fighting for a place in the competition, are... Abby. Peter and Rochelle. The rest of you are safe and through to next week. Off you go. All right, you got it. Well Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. I'm at least crying. <laughs> oh, sheer relief. Pure relief. It's, yeah, you do expect to feel sort of more like, yay, but it's just pure, oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm not surprised I'm in the bottom at all. I'm not going to lie, I didn't think I'd be in the bottom. Let's talk about the people who are coming on the sofa. Peter. When I went there and I saw him with the columns, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, that, you know, there's columns in the garden, so I get why he did it. Do you think he went too far? I think we just really need to understand kind of what his thought process was, because there were so many ideas in that room. It just seemed like he didn't know when to stop. He was like he was trying to come up with every idea he's ever had yes. and put it in one room. I felt sorry for Rochelle. She'd done so much research about John Evelyn. She knew everything about him. I get what she was doing about trying to create this other view with the window. 
just badly executed and those photographs never look good. Now, with Abby, you can't really scrimp on faux botanicals. They look cheap, whereas yeah. Dean went for real plants yeah. and it works. Also, we're in grade <laughs> two listed gardens. Mm. I mean, I think to put fake foliage into a room is yeah. something of a, an affront. Yeah. I can forgive a lot if they can tell me why they did it. If there was a very clear rationale, it's the person that can't justify it. That's when I start to get a little bit itchy. I'm actually worried for the three people on the sofa because <laughs> I see you're getting very passionate now, Michelle. Guy, get your crash helmet on. <laughs> 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 Hello. Hi. I know this isn't where you want to be, but this is very much about feedback. It's just so we can really understand why you made the choices and decisions that you did, OK? So, Abby, may I start with you? You had a lot going on in your room. What was your starting point? As soon as I read the brief, I was like, oh, my God, I want wisteria. It was just my automatic, what I think when I think of eccentric British historical places, I always just picture hanging wisteria. And how did that then fit with the bulldogs and the little dogs by the so, head? And... I, so, my signature style is that I am quite over the top. And it's just my love of upcycling. I just wanted the Staffordshire dog just to give that regal British eccentric feel that I feel like the manor had. And tell me about the, the bed set. So I'm going to hold my hands up. I measured my bed wrong. So I had this lovely vintage ornate bed set, which I then basically had to dismantle and basically come up with some really quick solutions of how am I going to make this ginormous bed fit in such a small headboard. And then when I'd put it into the centre of the wall, I realised that you were only given a tiny, tiny amount to be able to walk actually into the room around the bed. So I made that decision to scooch it over and right. then just put the wallpaper all the way up so it sort of distracted your eye kind of at the fact that it wasn't in the middle of the room. It's a shame about the extension to the headboard. I think my solution would have been just ditch it because it wasn't doing you any favours because the symmetry was completely off. And I think also not having the correct dimensions for the bed, it's the first thing that you read in a hotel room, obviously. Because it seems like it became a catalogue of errors, that bed head wasn't wide enough, so we altered that, then that changed the wallpaper, then that changed the panels, and that whole sequence is the bit that really didn't work. Mm. Not measuring the bed correctly was 100% my biggest mistake. OK, so, Peter, you also threw rather a lot of <laughs> ideas at your room and we really struggled to just get a hand on, like, what was the key idea? I think the key idea was to be eccentric. But tell me, what do you understand yeah. as British eccentricity, then? I would say British eccentricity is having a hair on the wall and having a Jack Russell on the wall. They were the bits that I was trying to bring out. The difficulty, though, with what you showed us was the variance of things that you did. The pair with the monocle, and I can see, OK, yeah, that's sort of very Alice in Wonderland. Then we shift over to there's a kind of wooden frog crawling up a picture. And then we have this very shiny bedspread <laughs> as well. And they're all saying very, very different things. Right, yeah. I just thought the, he the headboard might not have been that practical with the <laughs> doorknobs on. No, that, that was a, a, a moment of madness. I should have scrapped that. That mm -hmm. should have gone and a strong key design with the library, and then it went a bit wild. I thought the library was amazing, and it was a really good solution to closing up that pod space. And if you kept with the library theme, and that would bring in Alice in Wonderland and the hare and the animals and yeah. all those elements, yeah. that would have been great. There was an enormous exuberance to what you did, but it was just... We veered into madness. I am learning all the way here. I've got so many ideas in my brain, and I should really start and push some of those ideas back down. Rochelle, can you tell me a bit about the faux window? So I imagined that my client was John Evelyn, and so I really wanted to create this massive window that showed you where his inspiration came from. But, yeah, obviously, it didn't work out very well. <laughs> well, no, we could tell that you'd done the research, and that was something that we really wanted to see because it was such an incredible historical location. Do you think it was successful with the kind of framing around it, though? Because it is it is a kind of, kind of... It's a big view, it's a big vista, and yet it was kind of maybe a bit curtailed by a sort of greenhouse-type frame around it? 
Yeah, now looking back at it, actually maybe I could have reflected the actual windows that were in that space, that sh the shape of those actual windows would have been much more appropriate. You're right, the architecture of the building is quite strong, it's a Gothic language, and if you'd repeated some of that, that would have been a way of doing it. I also think that using a real photograph rarely works in those kind of things. And maybe if you'd had a drawing or an engraving, it would have helped. It's also really difficult when you can't see and feel the space for yourself. You worry sometimes about overpowering things. I find that really interesting that you use the word like you didn't want it to overpower. And in fact, when we looked at your design, I just wanted bigger. Like, I wanted that, like, red paint to come all the way down the wall. We wanted that vision to go across the whole wall. Because I can tell that you understand colour, but it was so subtle. Yeah. And it was like, what is this girl afraid of? I think, for me, it's a lot about confidence, and part of me maybe is holding back too much. This week, it feels very much like this is a, a judgement about ideas. My strongest thing, I will always say, is to have one key design idea and Abby and Rochelle I feel like you had a lot of ideas that could have worked and Peter my lord you definitely had loads and loads of ideas but there were too many and it was too much and I'm sorry for that reason you will be the person leaving us this week okay that's fine yeah. I, I know exactly where I went wrong and yeah there was too much going on the ideas were all so different. Yeah. Everything was fighting. Yeah. And yet you did show us some design brilliance. You loved the bookcases, mm, loved your mm. room last week too. Mm. But this one... Didn't work. No, <laughs> it didn't. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thanks. I'm good it'll be going, but it's given me uh, this new lease of life that I was wanting. You know, and it's never too old to follow your dreams either, whether you get knocked down or not. Ideas are everything in design. You can't start a project without them, but you also need to know when to stop. And Peter in this challenge just kept going and going and going, and it just didn't work. <laughs>